Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Overwatch Open. We are here at the Turner Studios, and we are about to kick off an amazing week of Overwatch. We have 16 teams, eight from NA, eight from EU. We've got me as your host, Seltzer. I'm so excited to be joining you, along with an incredible cast of talent. Here on the desk, I, of course, have Huck, Chris Loranger. You are a former pro player. You are an analyst. You've helped a lot of these teams build out their rosters. And Huck, you are, in fact, a player for Team Canada coming up at the Overwatch World Cup. So uh, how does it feel to be here on the desk? I'm blushing. <laughs> all, all those compliments. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm just happy to be here, and I hope we have great games. I hope so as well. I think it's uh, it's almost a guarantee with the lineup we have. But ZP, you know these teams really well. You've been involved in the Overwatch scene since the very beginning. So uh, what is it like for you to be here on this desk today? It's absolutely surreal to be here in Atlanta, to be surrounded by the top Overwatch players, players that I have seen over the last year, seen their ups and downs, and see them all fight it out here for the biggest prize pool in Overwatch history. It is great. Well, the greatness doesn't stop here on the desk, ZP. We also have an exceptionally talented interviewer, none other than Malik Forte up there looking so handsome. Malik, what is it like for you to be here at the Overwatch Open? Uh, I'm ecstatic, to say the least. Uh, <laughs> and you're looking beautiful today as well, Rachel. Thank you very much. I was waiting for, for somebody to tell me. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> I, well, I would be the one. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, guys, uh, there's a lot of fierce competition coming up this week. So if you want to chime in on the action, please tell us who you think is going to win. Uh, tweet us at the E-League Twitter with the hashtag OWOpen and chime in. Or if you just want to send random Overwatch memes, feel free to do that as well. Anyways, over Labor Day weekend, tons of Overwatch fans flocked to Atlanta, Georgia for Dragon Con 2016. Many brought to life the game's colorful cast, and it is by no surprise that Overwatch fans nailed each character perfectly. Check it out. There was a really great turnout of Overwatch cosplay, and they've been popping up all around the show. Don't rap, brawl and been ready. It's high noon. Freeze, don't move. Heroes never die. <laughs> Eugene, okay, okay. And I'm stuck. <laughs> I'm here at Dragon Con, dressed up as Valkyrie Mercy. I'm just as diva. Today I also got the chance to walk in the parade, and it was awesome. I love the diversity of all the different heroes that they have in the game. There's really a role for everyone to play in cosplay. It's really welcoming to the entire cosplay community. I'm here to see Reinhardt, Bastion, Anna, McCree. I'd really like to see a tour be run, but I don't think that's possible. What went into making this costume was a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, and money. Roadhog from Overwatch, they did everything freehand. Hopefully it doesn't show. Play of the day definitely goes to Bastion. I think Bastion? Definitely go to the Bastion, Bastion saw all the way. Play of the game goes to Bastion. Play of the day had to have been Bastion. <laughs> Actually, what am I saying? I got play of the day. Roadhog, play of the day. Hi, I'm Kevin Stallard. I'm director of video game programming here at Dragon Con. We're at the uh, video game costume contest here at the Westin. There are more people in costume than not in costume at Dragon Con. And when you're talking 75, 80,000 people, that's a lot of costumes. I'm just as Devil Mercy from Overwatch. I just got first runner up, and I'm really excited. Okay. Break it down! I can only imagine the amount of time they spent making those cosplays. But anyways, guys, I don't know about you, but I am ready for some competitive Overwatch. So without any further ado, I'm going to send you back to the desk. Thank you so much, Malik. Let's get our cast at home all set up with our schedule for the week. Let's take a quick look at how everything is going to play out. Of course, today, tomorrow, we have North America. Then we're going to take a little day off, relax, kick back, and come back to you with EU, and then wrap things up on Friday at 10 PM on TBS, where we have our finals. It's going to be incredible. First up, uh, we have our Group A bracket. We're starting things off today with that Envious and Splice match. Then we're going to follow it up with NRG and Team Liquid. Then we have our uh, upper and lower bracket matches today for Group A and Group B as well. Group B, of course, featuring Cloud9, Method, Fnatic, and Immortals. These matches look incredible. Let's take a quick look at what we're going to see today because uh, these matchups, guys, do you have any particular favorites? ZP, what are you looking at here? I think the match that I'm looking forward to most today is NRG versus Liquid, because for those who haven't been following these two teams, NRG has been boot camping sort of off 
off the grid, just we don't know where they stand, but they've been putting a lot of effort. And Team Liquid, they've recently upgraded. They added Rafa to their roster. They've been making more intelligent decisions, and they're a wild card. I think it's the one matchup today where no one really knows what's going to happen, but a lot of people have hopes that it's going to be great. Great. Huck, anything you want to add about these matchups? I, I, I personally think Group B is going to be very exciting. I think uh, Cloud9 versus Fnatic, but we'll see. I think either way, there's going to be a lot of close games. Yeah, all the teams that got here are incredible. They qualified over the course of the whole summer, so everyone uh, deserves to be here. The matches are all going to be great. I can guarantee that, I think. But uh, one of the things to keep an eye on in our matches today, we're going to look out for that NIP strat. They popularized it, but so many teams are playing it. That's three support, three tank. ZP, why don't you break it down for us? So the NIP strat, this has been one of the most dominant forces in the meta recently, and it comes down to making the best use of Ana and the fact that Zenyatta recently got nerfed a little bit, so you can run three support with three tanks. There are vari variations. I think we'll see a lot of 3 2 1 where you drop one support, throw in a McCree or something like that. But it really comes down to the fact that Nano Boost for Ana is so incredibly powerful. She can heal three different targets that are really beefy, and you can set the tone with your Nano Boost, go right in, and make things really rough for your opponents. Yeah, I think not even the 3 3 strat, as you yeah. said. I think just in particular, anytime that Ana is going to be played, it's going to yeah. be almost every matchup. I don't know really too many teams that don't run it, and any team that doesn't, it's, it, it'll be a big surprise, but it could give them a slight advantage. It's, it's about who's ahead of the meta because everybody's using Anna every match. All right, well, Anna's definitely going to be a hero for everyone to keep their eye on. But with so much action, guys, kick back and get the long view. We're going to be right back after this break for Envious versus Splice. Envious, of course, had one of those super long win streaks all summer long. It was Rogue that knocked him off him, but we can't deny that Envy super strong here. Splice, though. A lot of former FPS pros on this team and a great opportunity to prove themselves.